How's it going everyone? My name is Stefan. I hope you guys are all having a fantastic day. And I'm here bringing you guys a video explaining the differences between a 60 hertz panel and a 120 hertz panel. Now the reason why I chose 120 hertz instead of choosing 100 or 144 um, is because it's kind of that sweet spot in the middle and I decided that it would just be easier to call it 120 um, rather than 100 and 144. And honestly guys, the difference between all those three um, frame rates or you know refresh rates are the exact same like you honestly cannot notice the difference between 100 and 120 and 144 Hertz um, on a monitor it's just really un um, distinguishable um, for me and for a lot of other people so that's kind of why I just called it 120 and kept it at that but um, today I'm basically gonna be going over the pros and the cons of each and kind of tell you guys which one is right for you and your use case scenario so with that being said let's jump into the first thing that I have to say and that is the price for um, both of these monitors. So when it comes to a 60 year panel, um, these things are pretty much everywhere. Um, they have become so mainstream that you can pick one up for like less than 200 or even $100 in some cases. Um, they are extremely cheap and especially compared to the where um, like many years ago, they have dropped a lot in price. So you can definitely pick one of these things up for very cheap. Now in comparison to a 120 hertz monitor, um, you are going to be noticing a difference in price. Um, now, obviously, when you're jumping up frame rates, um, you'd expect to be jumping up in price, and that's exactly what happens here. Now, the difference in that price obviously varies from monitor to monitor, company to company, um, and refresh rate to refresh rate. But generally, what you're going to be looking at is an increase of two to three hundred dollars um, in comparison to a standard 60 hertz um, refresh rate monitor. So, what that kind of you know means and putting into perspective is if you know you buy a monitor. Um, you know, a normal, regular 60 year panel, um, you're pretty much going to be looking at, again, around 100 to $200. While if you're getting a 120 hertz panel, you're going to be looking at somewhere between four to possibly $500. So um, that's kind of, you know, just a bare bone, um, simple, you know, price range there. Um, obviously, this can differ a lot depending on the manufacturer, depending on, you know, the feature set and all that sort of stuff. But that's just kind of, you know, putting into perspective of the differences in prices. Now, what do you necessarily get for that price um, is honestly, you know, quite a lot. Um, and it honestly depends on what your use case scenario is. So um, when it comes to a 120 hertz panel, um, you're obviously getting two times the hertz, the amount of hertz that your panel can produce. Now, what does hertz mean exactly? Um, obviously, you guys are seeing right now some CSGO gameplay on your screen. So I'm, gonna be, I'm playing a FPS game. Now, I recorded this um, you know, a little bit back, and what I did basically is, well, throughout the gameplay you're going to see is I basically change um, through 60 and 120 frames. Now, unfortunately, YouTube doesn't show um, 120 frames natively, um, or really at all, I'm pretty sure, um, and they actually just included 60 not too long ago, so um, it's going to mean 60 frames, but just bear with it, and uh, I'm going to tell you what I have experienced. So, um, obviously, I have not played 60 um, on, on a 60 hertz panel in a while. Um, this is still what I played it on. It was still 120 hertz, um, except I went into the NVIDIA control panel um, for my monitor and just toned it down to 60 frames. Now, there's multiple ways you can do this. Um, it's just what I find is easier. Um, and basically, I played the game, you know, some more in 60 frames, and I kind of compared it to the when or when I played it at 120. So, um, for gaming, 120 hertz definitely makes a big difference. Um, not only when you're just playing the game, but you're also going to notice it in your skills in that specific game. And especially in games um, that are really fast paced, like a first person shooter, um, you will honestly get better. And I know that sounds crazy, but it honestly does happen. Um, when you actually have more frames um, being able to be displayed on your screen, um, you end up having better, you know, faster reflexes um, when it comes to the small, minor stuff um, that happens on your screen. Um, and what I mean by that is that when you talk about Hertz, you're basically referring it to as frames, or at least that's the way I think of it. I'm not exactly sure the exact definition if you want to compare it, but it's basically frames. Um, so when you have a 60 hertz monitor, your computer, even though you are pushing more frames, you're only being able to see 60 of those how so many frames that you are getting. Now, obviously, if your computer can only push out 60 frames, this isn't a big drawback. But for other people out there that possibly are thinking of upgrading their computer or are in the market of upgrading their current monitor because you know they just don't want um, to see just 60 frames when their computer is pushing out much more than that, um, you're being very much limited to the amounts of hertz that your monitor has. And um, you know if you have more 
no frames being displayed by your graphics card and your monitor only supports 60, um, you are going to be running into some issues with um, screen tearing, which is you know something in, you know of its own thing. But you know, kind of just to let you guys know, um, it's when like two separate frames um, just kind of overlap and you know it skips some frames and it just creates a really bad image on your screen, and you really don't want that. Um, now there are some things out there like VSync, for example, um, that's pretty native in most games that um, quote unquote fix that, but um, it really doesn't fix it and on, honestly just makes it worse um, and it's especially really bad if you have a computer that's just barely pushing 60 frames um, with vsync on you are going to be um, losing a lot of that because it takes a lot of processing power um, to run so generally what things have you know happen is g-sync comes out um, or free sync on the amd side and uh, these things are meant to fix that sort of stuff but again, with things like those, um, it's very good with a higher refresh rate. So um, in games, generally, higher refresh rates definitely help um, out a lot, especially if you don't want to have, you know, like things like VSync um, to just kind of screw up your game, honestly, um, and take a lot of that processing power out of it. Um, but again, if you don't want to spend things like, you know, a lot of money on G-Sync, which is quite expensive, um, just getting a higher frame rate um, monitor, or higher hurt monitor, um, definitely helps with that. Now, that's not the only thing that 120 hertz definitely helps you with. Um, you know, comparison to 60 frames again, or 60 hertz rather, you are going to be seeing two times as much um, frame rates going on your screen. So it's going to be a smoother experience throughout your whole OS. Things like launching apps, going through you know web pages, um, scrolling, just overall moving your cursor on your screen is going to be significantly smoother. Um, when it comes to having a faster refresh monitor now it's all now that sounds amazing but as I said right now the pricing um, for a higher refresh rate monitor is still quite a bit more expensive now we are in like 2015 at the end um, almost in 2016 um, but there is still a significant price increase so that leads me to the question who are these monitors for um, obviously 60 Hertz is mainstream it's everywhere um, things like games um, are very much compatible with it and are pretty much optimized to run at 60 frames things like consoles for example um, run at 60 frames so if you're gonna be getting things like a console and you're wondering why well, monitor um, just hands down don't even think about 120 stick to 60 that's all they can do um, but if you're gonna be in the PC side of things um, that's why 120 Hertz is a thing and uh, for that, it really comes down to what you're going to be using your monitor for. Um, generally, from day-to-day -day tasks, um, you know, sticking with a 60-frame monitor, if you or a 60 hertz monitor, if you're you know used to having um, all you know normal 60 hertz monitor before, um, is going to be just fine. Now, if you're going to be doing things um, like again intense gaming, um, you're going to want that smoother frame rate. It's definitely going to help you out, um, and it's going to be quite a awesome upgrade. But um, for the most, for most of people out there, again, I personally, if you're wondering, I use 120 hertz. Um, I've just always loved 120 hertz, and it's honestly, once you have it, you really can't go back. But if you're on 60 right now, and that's kind of what you do with your computer, um, I honestly just, I can't tell you to go with the 120 um, when it's not that much um, of a better experience if you're already used to 60 and it's okay. Um, just the price that you're going to be paying. Um, is quite you know significant for what you're going to be getting if you're not really crazy into that sort of stuff um, like gaming but you know that money can be put elsewhere and honestly something that I might sound crazy but I'd rather um, if you're you know really wanting to spend your money um, I'd rather put that extra money if, uh, that, if that's all what I'm going to be doing is like browsing the web and stuff into a higher resolution than a f refresh rate but on the other hand I really can't recommend 100 um, or 120 or 144 Hertz enough you know higher refresh rates um, definitely do make your experience better while using um, a monitor it definitely simplifies things um, and makes things smoother rather not simplified but smoother and you are going to be having a much uh, more enjoyable experience um, in the fluidity of your OS but again that all depends on what your graphics card can push so um, for my advice um, and safe to say if you're gonna be sticking with um, a rig right now that is you know kind of barely getting 60 frames or is getting it but you're not really into upgrading it stick to what you have stick to a 60 hertz monitor maybe get a better 60 hertz monitor because there's some really nice ones out there 
um, but stick to that. I'll leave um, some links in the description below, by the way, to some options if you guys want to see um, for both 60 and 120 hertz monitors or 144 or whatnot. Um, so you guys can have some, you know, ideas. If you are absolutely, you know, have no idea where to start, I'll, you know, leave some links down there. But um, pretty much, if you're going to be sticking to um, a graphics card that can, you know, mainly push 60 frames, stick to a uh, 60 hertz monitor. It's definitely going to be your best case scenario. Um, and then if you're going to be going for, um, you know, 120 hertz uh, monitor, make sure that your graphics card can do it. Um, and honestly, just just go at it. It's a fantastic thing. It's absolutely amazing to have all those um, hertz. I definitely recommend it. But again, um, you know, I think about it pretty thoroughly because it is quite a difference in price. But again, if you're going to be building a new rig and things like that, um, it is something to keep in mind. And you should probably invest some money into a nice um, quality high hertz monitor. But that's pretty much all that I have to say for this video. I know it's a little bit long, but I definitely wanted to give all my thoughts um, upon this matter. Again, um, higher hertz does not always mean better. Um, just let you know, letting you guys know that. Don't get me wrong. Um, higher hertz does not necessarily mean a better panel. There are panels out there um, on the 60 hertz side that are much, much better um, than 120 hertz. I mean, 120 hertz are usually TN panels, um, while with 60 hertz, you can get really, really nice, accurate displays like IPS and stuff. So if you're going to be interested in photography um, or video editing, you know, maybe those sort of panels will be nicer. Um, but when it comes to just purely gaming, um, you're going to obviously see a huge difference um, going with a 60 um, or going from a 60 to 120 hertz. But again, that's pretty much it. Hope you guys did enjoy the video. Um, if you have, let me know by hitting that like button. And let me know in the comments below what you guys' opinions and thoughts are. Um, with this, do you guys have a 60 hertz monitor or do you have a 120 hertz monitor? Are you happy with it? Um, and just let me know what you guys have to say in the comments below. And also, while I'm on the topic of it, let me know in the comments below what you guys have um, and if you have any suggestions for some videos that you might like me to make in the future. Um, I'm definitely open to some ideas if you guys have any. So um, that's pretty much it, though. Thank you so much for watching. I truly hope you guys did enjoy the video, and I'll catch you all later in the next one. Peace out.